Eddie Chavez. Ruben Nava. And Jesse Romero. Jesus 911. Jesus 911, welcome to our Monday show. Boy, oh boy, I've been waiting about 30 years for this. I remember when I was the young rookie Los Angeles deputy sheriff, and uh, Jesus Christ came into my life in a very powerful way through a friendship with a with a gentleman that's uh, doing the show with me on Mondays now, Paul Clay. I remember I told them when we, when we were young rookies, I said, one day, Paul, I think we're going to evangelize the Lord's people together. Well, the day finally came. We're here. Paul, welcome. You're my Monday uh, uh, two-man car. You're my bookman on Mondays. Welcome to the sh- welcome to your show, Jesus 911. Thank you, Jess. It's a it's an honor to be here with you, and uh, I feel great. Tell people a little bit about our friendship, how we met, and stuff, and uh, and uh, the fact uh, that uh, we had an effect on each other, a mutual effect. You you basically really just challenged me to really cultivate my faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And I challenged you to start studying apologetics and scripture at a deeper level in church history. And uh, we had a reciprocal effect on each other. And uh, we've been fired up Catholic Christians now for several decades. But yes, you share yes. the audience how we met? Yeah, well, we were uh, young deputies working uh, at Men Central Jail with L.A. County. And uh, for those of you who don't know, um, when I was younger, I wasn't well grounded in the faith, and I actually left the church. And I was a, uh, a Protestant Christian at the time, and uh, that's where I met Jess. And he, at the time, was a Catholic who probably didn't know his faith all that well. And we just built a friendship around around Christ, and uh, yeah, that was it. <laughs> And both of us just started growing in our faith as, as a result of that friendship. And here we are today, uh, finally doing a radio show together. It's called Jesus 911. Yes. By the way, Jesus 911, don't think it's a cop show. People say, oh, well, I'm not a cop. No, no, no. Jesus 911, what it means is this, okay? Uh, 911 is an assistance call. You know, it's a call for help. <laughs> what I'm telling you is everybody has to call Jesus for help. That's why we call the show Jesus 911. There's a beautiful Catholic prayer that goes, Lord, come to our assistance. And so this is a show for every buddy on planet Earth because we all want you to fall on your knees and call Jesus for help. Amen. Paul, Amen. I want to put on a small little clip that wants your comments. There's a, a priest by the name of Father Michael O'Connor who weighs in on the elections. And I just want the audience to hear. It's a one minute, 30 clip. Uh, Mr. Engineer, can you play the clip? Because Joe Biden masquerades as a Catholic, I'm going to use his name. Joe Biden embraces teachings that are absolutely and fundamentally opposed to the priorities of our church to protect life, to protect the sanctity and the holiness of marriage. He is, in some respects, an embarrassment to Catholicism. He is pro-abortion for any reason or for no reason at all. There is an amendment that is written to protect your federal tax dollars, the money that you give to Caesar, that protects that money from paying directly for abortion. It's called the Hyde Amendment. Joe Biden actively wants to repeal that amendment. There was a bill that was proposed that babies that survive the abortion process, there is a living human being in the operating room alive. There was an amendment that said that if a child survives abortion, that it must be given medical care. Joe Biden doesn't support that. He opposes the teachings of the Catholic Church. This isn't political. This is moral. This is religion. This is our faith. Paul, I got a mouthful to say about that. Uh, imagine if we were living back, let's say, 160 years ago, and you had a perfect candidate. Boy, you agree with him on all issues as a Catholic, but he believed in, in owning blacks and enslaving blacks and in Jim Crow laws. I would have said, well, you know what? I agree with you on every other issue, but the fact that you want to impose slavery on blacks that single issue disqualifies you from getting my Catholic vote. 
I would say right now, the parallel would be, hey, you can have great ideas about the economy, about uh, you know foreign uh, foreign policy, uh, about uh, you know about school choice, everything. You can be just spot on. But if you believe in killing innocent babies, that disqualifies you from my vote. What do you say, Paul? I couldn't agree more with that situation, and I, it's I'm just uh, shocked at how many uh, how many Catholics are out there still supporting Joe Biden. Um, listen, uh, there's a lot of issues. I get it that we're divided on, you know, how we should uh, treat immigration, et cetera, et cetera. But the one issue that we have to stand united on is the very basic issue. It's what it's all about, and that's called life. And we know that all life begins with God. And uh, therefore, the candidate that is pro-life is the candidate that should get our vote, hands down. Absolutely. Uh, Paul, I just even go back to the Declaration of Independence. As Americans were afforded life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. How can you have liberty and how can you have the pursuit of happiness if they kill you right in your mother's womb? Then the Declaration <laughs> of Independence means nothing. And it reminds me also, Paul, you know, Moses told the Israelites in Deuteronomy, I think, chapter 30, you know, he says, I set before you, you know, I, I choose, I set before you life and death, and I tell you this day, choose life. Moses said that, Joshua said that. This is a constant refrain through the prophets. And so as a Catholic, uh, Joe Biden is not even an option for a practicing Catholic Christian that wants to go to heaven. What say you? Yeah, well, I think Father O'Connor hit it right on the head. He's an embarrassment. Uh, yeah. He, uh, so many people, uh, you know, uh, well, you know, we call them cafeteria Catholics. <laughs> you know, they, they, you know, they hold the, the name Catholic, but what they do is they say, well, I, I choose to believe this issue, but I don't choose to believe that issue. And that's where Joe Biden is right now. There is absolutely no way that you can, uh, believe uh, and hold to the uh, the tenets of the faith and be uh, uh, pro-choice. It's just uh, the two are just uh, incongruous. That's right. Paul, yeah. I want to move on to another topic that's made the international news. It's all over social media. And it's a topic that pains me because, again, it's, it's, re it's referring to our church. But I thank God that there are successors of the apostles that love a, a brother apostle with uh, with such such depth and such sincerity that they would offer a correction. What we're going to see right now, Cardinal Burke, much like St. Paul in the book of Galatians, uh, has corrected uh, Pope Francis in, 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 in charity, in fraternal charity, in, brother, in fraternal brotherhood, just like Paul corrected Peter in the, in, uh, in the book of Galatians chapter 2. Yeah. And here's an article. I just want to just uh, read some of the stuff, then we'll make some comments on it, because... This is, uh, this is international news. It says Cardinal Burke, by the way, his, his, his academic credentials are unimpeachable. He was basically formerly the head of the, of the Catholic Supreme Court. That's what, the, that's what he was. The tribunal in the Vatican, it's the Catholic Church's Supreme Court. He was the head of the Catholic Supreme Court put there by Pope Benedict for many years. And so the article says this, the worldwide communications media have reported with strong emphasis as a change, of course, the news that Pope Francis has declared that persons in the homosexual condition as children of God have a right to have a family and that no one should be thrown out of or be made unhappy because of it. Moreover, they write that he has declared, quote, what we have to create is a civil union. In this way, they will be legally covered. I have defended this, close quote. So the declarations were made in an interview with an Italian, uh, with a director named Evgeny Avnisky, a director of a documentary called Francesco, which premiered, I think, over the weekend. And uh, the article says this, such declarations generate great bewilderness, cause confusion and error amongst Catholic faithful, and as much as they're contrary to the teachings of sacred scripture and sacred tradition and the recent magisterium by which the church guards, protects, and interprets the whole deposit of faith contained uh, in the sacred scripture and sacred tradition. They cause wonderment and error regarding the church's teaching among people of goodwill who sincerely wish to know what the Catholic church teaches. And they impose upon pastors of souls 
the duty of conscience to make fitting and necessary clarifications. So I'm seeing a lot of priests all over the country on YouTube that over the weekend they made clarification on the, the Pope's uh, opinion to a cameraman that was basically, again, not from the chair of Peter, not as a Pope. This was his private opinion as a theologian. So, uh, Paul, if you, want to, if you want to jump on the next paragraph, do you have it there in front of you? I do not. Um, okay, I, I, I've got it here. And then we'll get your cut. Well, we're about to go to a break. But uh, Cardinal Burke quotes the meat of, the meat of his argument. He, he goes right to the magisterium. He makes three points. He says, basing itself on sacred scripture, which represents homosexual acts as of grave depravity, tradition has always declared that homosexual acts are intrinsically disordered. Catechism 2357. And as much as they're contrary to natural law, they're close to the gift of life and void of a true and effective and sexual complementarity. Therefore, they cannot be approved. Jesus 911, two man car, Jess Romero, Paul Clay. Monday's uh, Jesus 911 uh, host. We're talking about the Pope's statements, Cardinal Burke's correction. We'll be right back. Don't change that dial. Jesus said in Matthew 26, Stay awake and pray that you may not enter into temptation. According to St. Ephraim, Jesus, who feared nothing, experienced fear and asked to be freed from death, although he knew it was impossible. How much more must we persevere in prayer before temptation assails us, so that we may be freed when the test has come? May God grant that we may withstand temptation and carry out his will in all things. How does the baby eat? Can the baby hear me? How did the baby get in there? Wow, a pregnancy can sure generate a lot of questions, but what's important is that a baby is a baby inside and out of the womb, not just after birth, but nine months before at conception. That's right, every baby is a miracle. Hello, my name is Marianne Kuharski. I'm the director of Pro-Life Across America. If you know someone who is pregnant or in need of alternatives or assistance, or would like to support the work of Pro-Life Across America, please visit our website at prolifeacrossamerica.org, or better yet, simply dial pound 250 on your cell phone and say the keyword pro-life. Pro-Life Across America is non-political and totally educational. A baby's heart is beating 18 days from conception. Pro-life across America, the billboard people. Buying or selling your home or your business property? This is Terry Barber. Real Estate for Life underwrites the Terry and Jesse Show. And they can connect you to one of 900 pro-life real estate agents around the world. And when they receive their referral fee, they will give 80% of it to a pro-life organization. Wow, that's 80%. Realestateforlife.org, 877-LIFE-US-1. Now, back to Jesus 911. If this call is not an emergency, dial 888-526-2151. Jesus 911, two-man car, Jess Romero, Paul Clay. Paul Clay is a retired lieutenant from uh, the Los Angeles Sheriff's Department, had an illustrious career, and before that, he served our country in the Coast Guard, and where else, Paul? The Navy, correct? Air Force. Air, I'm always, why do I keep saying Navy? <laughs> why do you look, and, uh, and so my friend Paul Clay has had an entire life since he was a young man of complete service and dedication to this country and to his fellow man. And I'll tell you why this comes from is because he's a God fearing man. He loves God and he understands the importance of service. By the way, Paul, I'm going to give the people a teaser for next week. Next week, we're going to have it next Monday. We're going to have a special program. My, my, my brother in Christ here, Paul Clay is a uh, Catholic Christian, but he happens to be black. 
Next week, we're, we're going to have another uh, 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 incredible Catholic guy named Bob, Bob Hensley. He's a black Catholic as well. So next week, Paul Clay, a black Catholic who loves the Lord and knows his faith, and Bob Hemsley, a black Catholic, we're going to be talking about Black Lives Matter next Monday, and we're going to be talking about the consequences of this movement, the consequences it's having upon society, and the, and the poison, the cancer that is this, this actually is to the black community. So that'll be next Monday's show, but right now we're talking about the statement over the weekend which uh, which Cardinal Raymond Burke, Paul, as a successor of the Apostle, as an advisor to the Pope, he offered a correction using sacred scripture, sacred tradition, and the magisterial teachings of the Church. Do you have any comments on this? Yeah, well, the, the way I see this issue, Jess, is uh, there's a serious lack of clarity. When we talk about uh, issues like uh, you know, the reference of uh, you know, children of God, as an example, when I hear the word children, I think uh, intimacy, and I think uh, you know we all we obviously know that children are included in our family, and so when we're talking about the church, uh, we know that we have adoption uh, uh, as sons to God through Christ only. So you know we have to be careful when we when we say that people are unrepentant in mortal sin, and then and we call them children. And not baptize some of the animals. Yeah, right. and uh, and as a matter of fact, uh, if we're talking about the, the you know the family or you know of Adam, that's one thing. But we need to clear that up. But if we're talking about uh, you know uh, inclusiveness in the body of Christ, then I think uh, uh, all, uh, you know the, the faithful out there who are rightly uh, questioning this and clarifying uh, are doing a good job. Yeah, and I hear what you're saying, Paul. I think as Catholics. What we have to do is, uh, and, and Father Ripperger, who's a friend of mine, he's an exorcist and he's taught me a lot. He says that it's, uh, as Catholics, we, ha and, and, uh, we have to use precise language. He says, imprecision is the sign of the diabolical. Imprecise yes. language is the sign of the diabolical. As Catholics, we have to be precise with what we say. As our Lord says, let your yes be yes and your no be no. And, uh, and, and, and again, we can't be promoting false ecumenism. We Amen. can't be saying, you're, you're fine where you're at, Mr. Hindu, Mr. Buddhist. Man, you keep doing your mantras and you keep doing sitting in that lotus position and don't worry, you're a good person. You're going to go to heaven just like I am <laughs> one day. Uh, that's a false ecumenism. Yeah. As Catholics, the goal of Catholicism is to bring the whole world into captivity to Christ. This is official papal teaching. It's called the social Amen. kingship of Christ, where we want to bring every human being that breathes into a relationship with Christ, their king. And we want to bring every country, communist, Islamic, socialist, under submission or under, under the obedience and authority of Christ, their king. This is the goal, of Paul, and it doesn't, it doesn't help by using sloppy, imprecise language, especially when it comes from the, the pastors and shepherds of the church. Uh, let, me, let me tell you a story. Um, I was mentoring a new sergeant, and uh, you know, the sergeant said something, and whatever the sergeant said, it just rippled you know, through all the deputies, and it became a big incident. And later I was talking with the sergeant, and the sergeant told me, I didn't realize that you know, uh, when I say something, you know, it had, you know, uh, people would react so much. I said things all my whole career as a deputy and nobody said anything, but as a sergeant, it was different. And I think that's the principle here. When, when you have authority and when you, uh, uh, like the Pope, uh, like the Pope, exactly. It means something. And that's why it's important that we pick our words and choose our words wisely, because, uh, uh if you don't, it will cause uh, instability. That's right. Yeah. And Cardinal Burke, who's an advisor, I mean, the cardinals are advisors to the Pope. He came back and just basically offered a correction of his, of his opinion. And let's be honest, he gave his theological opinion to a camera crew. And so, but again, like Paul says, the fact that he has a white, you know, Albon and he's got the Zucchero and stuff, people are going <laughs> to say, that's the Pope. Look at what he just yes. said. Whoa, thunder and lightning just came down. 
And so here, Cardinal Burke, in, in the second paragraph, he says this. I don't know if you have the article in front of you, Paul. Do you have it there? I do not. Okay. He says, Cardinal Burke says, two, the particular and sometimes deep-seated tendencies of persons, men and women, in the homosexual condition, which are for them a trial, although they may not in themselves constitute a sin, represent nonetheless an objectively disordered inclinations. Catechism yes. 2358. And he says, uh, they are, speaking about the homosexuals, the, the, this, this action, he says, and they are therefore to be received with respect, compassion, and sensitivity, avoiding any unjust discrimination. The Catholic faith teaches the faithful to hate sin, but to love the sinner. So Cardinal Burke is saying, of course we love people that are sinners uh, and and I, I just had a little debate the other day. There was a girl going to medical school, and she's left the Catholic Church. She goes, I said, so why do you leave the Catholic You're going to medical school. Why do you leave the Catholic Church? Because in college, they, they showed me that the Catholic Church is, is their biggest. The Catholic Church hates homosexuals. I said, really? I, and so I told this young college girl in medical school, I said, did you know, have you read the Catholic Church's teaching on homosexuality? So I showed her paragraph 2358, what I just read to you. That the church says we have to receive homosexuals with respect, compassion, sensitivity, avoiding any unjust discrimination. And we're taught, we're taught to hate the sin but love the sinner. So I told her, I said, you know what we Catholics do with homosexuals? We call them to Jesus. We call them to repentance. In fact, the Catholic Church has the, the, the largest AIDS hospice system in the world. 20 to 25 percent of people dying of AIDS right now are being treated for free in a Catholic AIDS hospice, where Catholics are washing their wounds, bathing them, uh, giving them a dignified death, and giving them the sacraments, calling in priests before they die. That's what we Catholics, that's what we do to the homosexual community that's dying of AIDS. And I told this girl in medical school, I said, uh, there's one religion out there called Islam. You know what they do to homosexuals when they catch them? They cut their heads off, or they hang them on telephone poles. You don't believe me? Go on YouTube and watch what they do every Saturday night. And so... Whatever you learned in college about Catholics hating homosexuals, they told you the wrong thing. Yes. Is the, the Quran hate Islamic sh uh, Sharia law hates homosexuals, and it's proven every Saturday as they execute them. The Catholic Church loves them but hates their sin, and but we're compassionate to them. That's why we have the largest network of AIDS hospices in the world. Paul, Paul comments? Well, it just depends on how you define love. Uh, you know, the Bible clearly says love corrects. And if you know somebody is involved in a particular sin that will eventually lead to damnation of their soul, is it good to, is it the loving thing to just ignore that sin? Or is it uh, the loving thing to, you know, lovingly and uh, uh, caringly correct that person? You know, we're not talking about being homophobic here. We're talking about uh, understanding that this person's mortal soul is in jeopardy and you know, we could reason with the person. Uh, I get it. The world tells them that, uh, you know, this is who you are. And this is what I'm not hearing, Jess, in a lot of the conversation. I'm not hearing the issue of uh, repentance. I'm not hearing, uh, you Bingo. know, the issue that people need to turn away from their sin. And that's that. That's important. That's part of the equation. And if you just Mark celebrate 15. and have met. Mark 1, they, 15, repent and believe in the gospel. That's the uh, essence of what we call sinners to. Yes. And that's not yes. being said. That's not being said, Paul, by our shepherds. There's silence. Not, 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 yes. not by, 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 not by all of them. There's some that are doing it. But by and large, I just think in charity, I just, I, I, I really wish that the Holy Father would have not made this off the cuff comment to a camera crew because they ran with this, Paul, and they put it throughout all social media and they did that intentionally. And that's why when you're in a position of authority, a Pope, a president, a you have to be very circumspect with your words and especially watch what you're saying in light of we live in a day right now where they can take your words and put it around social media and it'll travel around the world like, you know, like, 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 like lightning, right? Yeah. Yes. It just, another issue that comes up is ex cathedra from the chair and, uh, you know, and a lot of people, I think, mistakenly think we Catholics believe that uh, if the Pope makes a comment, you know, he speaks for the entire church, a personal comment. And uh, I, I, would you comment on that a little bit? Absolutely. A next catheter statement is basically a, a pope speaking. The word catheter means chair in Latin. That's what it means, cathedra. And uh, it's, a, it's a statement made 
uh, where the Pope is invoking his infallibility. Well, guess yeah. what? It's only been used in 2,000 years. It's only been used twice. Okay? And so this is, uh, popes have sometimes theological opinions, and, and popes are open to being corrected. For example, Pope Benedict, while the sitting pope, he wrote a book on the side. He, as he's a pope, he wrote a book called Jesus of Nazareth. And it's, I mean, it's steeped with scripture and theology. Once he finished writing the book, and it's like a bestseller on Amazon, and he's a sitting pope of the Catholic Church, he says, oh, by the way, I wrote this book, you know, on my spare time as a theologian, as a private theologian. If, 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 if there's something here that you take issue with, I got no problem with it. You can criticize me on writing this book because I didn't write it as the pope. I wrote it on my spare time as a private theologian. So if you want to criticize some of my exegesis, that's fine with me. I'm okay with that. Right. See, th- th- that's the nuanced position, Paul. Just because the Pope says something, Catholics aren't, some, you know, it doesn't mean that the Catholic has to, whoa, the Pope said something. No. <laughs> yeah. Uh, again, even like Pope Benedict said, I wrote this book. I didn't write it as a Pope. I wrote it as a private theologian on my spare time. But, you know, I did it here in the Vatican. And, and, and you have issues with some of my exegesis. I got no problem with that. And so that's what, uh, and by the, by the way, to be fair, Pope Francis has said the same thing. He said in 2018 to some Italian bishops, he said, hey, if, if, if I say something, or, or, or he goes, that's fine. You guys can criticize me. So Pope Francis has told a body of the Italian bishops, it, my actions, if I say something that you think is out of line, that's fair. Go ahead and criticize me. Yeah. So the Holy Father has actually invited that. So I think Cardinal Burke is just taking him up as, a, as an advisor to the Pope saying, Holy Father, you know, let me just remind you of what the church has always said. And I, I'm glad that he did that. I think it took a lot of courage for Cardinal Burke, Raymond Burke to do that. Mm-hmm. I hear, the, I hear the music. Yep. Jesus 911, two-man car. Jess Romero, Paul Clay. We're talking about Cardinal Raymond's Burke, but we'll be moving on to another topic very shortly about uh, actually the dark side of, uh, of the actual activity of homosexuality. Is there a diabolical component? We'll look into that. Hi, this is Jesse Romero from the Terry and Jesse Show, also from Jesus 911. Let's face it, we all need to use the internet, but we need screen accountability. Why? Pornography is a huge problem, especially on the internet. And every time we tap into the internet, we get bombarded with images and temptations that degrade our humanity. So we need Covenant Eyes to block these pornographic sites and advertisements from infiltrating our lives. Covenant Eyes helps us take custody of our eyes and custody of our intellect. So I recommend you go to CovenantEyes.com and type in the promo code, the NPR, to support the network. Protect yourself and your family from the eminent threats on the internet. www.CovenantEyes.com Code VMPR Live Porn Free. Thank you for listening to Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Thank you. God bless you. Keep the faith. If you shop on Amazon.com, there's an easy way to support Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Just visit smile.amazon.com and type in Catholic Resource Center under the desired charity. Now, when you log into your Amazon account and purchase products, a portion of it will automatically go to support Virgin Most Powerful Radio at no cost to you. Thanks in advance for supporting CRC and VMPR, and may God richly bless you and your family. Buying or selling your home or your business property? This is Terry Barber. Real Estate for Life underwrites the Terry and Jesse Show. And they can connect you to one of 900 pro-life real estate agents around the world. And when they receive their referral fee, they will give 80% of it to a pro-life organization. Wow! That's 80%. Realestateforlife.org, 877-LIFE-US1. Now, 
back to Jesus 911. If this call is not an emergency, dial 888-526-2151. Come to our assistance. Hey, today's psalm at Holy Mass is, Blessed the man who follows not the counsel of the wicked, nor walks in the way of sinners, nor sits in the company of the insolent, but delights in the law of the Lord and meditates on his law day and night. We're talking about Cardinal Raymond Burke, who offered a correction to Pope Francis for his uh, his remark that's contrary to scripture and tradition as he gives us a theological opinion to a camera crew. Here's probably the meat of Cardinal Burke's argument. It's point number three. He says, the faithful... And in particular, Catholic politicians are held to oppose the legal recognition of homosexual unions. Okay? The right to form a family is not a private right to vindicate, but must correspond to the plan of the Creator, who has willed the human being in sexual difference, male and female, He created them, thus calling man, male and female, to the transmission of life. Because married couples ensure the suggestion of generations and are therefore eminently within the public interest, civil law grants them institutional recognition. Homosexual unions, on the other hand, do not need specific attention from the legal standpoint since they do not exercise this function for the common good. Here's the beat of it. Cardinal Burke says, To speak of a homosexual union in the same sense as the conjugal union of the married is in fact profoundly misleading because there can be no such union between persons of the same sex. In what regards the administration of justice, persons in the homosexual condition, as all citizens, can always make use of the provisions of law to safeguard their private rights. Then Cardinal Burke ends by saying this, it is a source of deep of the deepest sadness and pressing pastoral concern that the private opinions reported with so much emphasis by the press and attributed to Pope Francis do not correspond to the constant teaching of the Catholic Church as it is expressed in sacred scripture and sacred tradition and is guarded, protected, and interpreted by the magisterium. Equally sad, says Cardinal Burke, and concerning is the turmoil, confusion, and error that these statements cause among the Catholic faithful, as is the scandal they cause in general by giving totally false impression that the Catholic Church has had a change of course. That is, that the Church has changed its perennial teaching regarding such fundamental and critical questions. Really, no, no, nothing else needs to be said, Paul. What, what do you say? Yeah. Uh, Cardinal Burke is right on point. And again, he's quoting 2,000 years of Catholic uh, uh, tradition, sacred tradition. Uh, the Catholic Church has been consistent. And that's the, the one thing I love about the Catholic Church. It never changes. Um, you know, we, we're talking, you know, this reminds me, Jess, of uh, if you remember when uh, when marijuana, before it was legal, there were people who smoked marijuana. and uh, But when it became legal, uh, the use exponentially just increased. And it's the same thing with abortion. You remember before abortion, people were getting abortions. There were doctors it, who were, you know, it, unethically well, called, performing abortions. Remember, abortion was called by the Democrats. We should use it. It should be rare, safe, but legal. Remember that? Rare, safe, but <laughs> rare, legal? Rare, safe, but legal. Yeah. That's all, you that's see where that's window. gone. Right. So, yeah. so now we have yeah. a full explosion. You know, we have... Uh, millions of children being massacred through abortion, uh, and and if you, I see a pattern here, when the world, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, recognizes that there's acceptance, and uh, you know, and and it became law, they tweaked the law, uh, to the use of marijuana became legal, and you know, and and so the use just went off the charts, and it's the same thing with uh, with abortion, and I see this, you know, the same thing with the, the homosexual agenda. And it's sad, but once society began to embrace it and accept it and even celebrate it, you see now more and more and more people partaking in this. And that's why it's important that we take a strong stand and a loving stand to teach that, no, this isn't something that should be celebrated. This is something that should be repented from. And I, I know that sounds harsh 
And some people say, well, you're, you don't sound loving, but you know what? Love corrects and uh, God has set order. And just like uh, you read, Jess, there's disorder with, with, you know, with the practice of this. And disorder is not something from God. It's from the world. Mm -hmm. That's right. And you make a good point there, Paul. Uh, if, if something, God has given us order. God has yeah. given us, uh, God wants us to live clean lives. Yes. And God wants us to live lives of faithfulness. Amen. The diabolic wants disorder. He wants you to live an unclean life. Yes. And he wants a life of faithlessness. So, so here it is, side by side. This is spiritual warfare 101. God wants us because he gave us order, cleanliness, and faithfulness. Or sometimes it's called constancy. The diabolical, which is the opposite, the diabolical wants to promote internal disorder in your life and disorder in society. He wants you to live an unclean life, which means a life in mortal sin. And he wants you to live a life of faithlessness. Well, Paul, uh, the, the fact is, is that there's, there's even data. I'm looking at this one article that I just pulled up here. It says, uh, it says, Active homosexuals are 18 times more likely to contract AIDS. Did wow. you catch that? Active homosexuals are 18, 18 times more likely to contract AIDS. Yes. Again, because when you live a life of disorder, and, and, and we're talking about here, not the person, we're talking about the action. We're talking about the act of sodomy, which the church says, and by the way, I have to sometimes offer corrections to men, because believe it or not, Paul, I get, you know, when I do men's conferences, guys come up to me and they ask me, hey, Jess, he goes, yeah, 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 but sodomy, that's wrong between men, but there's no wrong, there's no problem within, within marriage, mm. right? I'm saying, time out, <laughs> time out. No, tr this, is a, this is a pastoral issue that I'm constantly putting out fires around the country. I say, bro, come over here. And I put my arm around them because they haven't been taught. They really well, let haven't me ta been taught. Well, let me tell okay, you. So I, I, yeah, <laughs> go ahead. Listen, coming from Protestantism, and I was there for a while, I can tell you that that idea comes from Protestantism because Protestantism teaches that the marriage bed is undefiled which basically means as long as two consenting adults are in agreement, you know, it's all good. And that, that mm -hmm. confusion comes, again, we know, we know that Protestantism represents uh, some of the truth, but not the fullness yeah. of the faith. Correct. And so, so, so many people get confused on that issue. Yeah, and so, so let, I, I've said this before, but I'll say it again in this show. The act of sodomy is an unnatural act and it's an act that offends God. It's an abomination because it's a selfish act. If you think about it, and I tell men, I'm saying, guys, sodomy is prohibited because it's an unnatural act. Number one. Number two, it's a selfish act. Only one person feels good. The other person's in a lot of pain. God did not design sexual intimacy to hurt each other, to do damage to each other. There's supposed to be a mutual exchange of life and love and, 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 uh, 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 and, and, and to uh, will good for the other person, not hurt the other person. Well, right. and, in fact, and in fact, even on, on, a, on a basically on a human level, you can see, uh, you want to make a comment, go ahead, and then I'll, I'll bring up a San Francisco study. Go ahead, Paul. I'll just confirm uh, agreement with what you're saying. Listen, uh, the uh, the tissue, you know, uh, that's right. Back there is uh, yeah. there's a lot of blood exchange during that act, and Bingo. that's why people are 18 times more likely to contract AIDS, you know, uh, it, you know, involved in uh, sodomy. Uh, it was not God did not design, uh, you know, the uh, anus in order to uh, 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 be uh, penetrated in that way. Correct. And, and again, that's why, again, the act of sodomy goes against natural law, the, yes. the way the body was created, and it right. goes against divine law. In other words, God has revealed to us through stories in Scripture 
uh, that this is something that offends God because it goes against the designs of the human body. And, and, and I think, Paul, using common sense, using just kind of like blue-collar language that people could understand, I, I would just say this, okay? Um, if you put gasoline in your oil can, you're going to have problems. Or if yeah. you put oil in your gas tank, you're going to have problems with the car. What am I trying to say? I'm trying to say that if you deposit certain things in the wrong place, again, like pouring motor oil into the gas line, again, by nature standards, you're courting a disaster. Yes. And nature doesn't forgive. And we call one of the disasters is AIDS. And we also see that there's 330 million Americans in our country. 110 million Americans have STDs. Oh. Why? Because one, why? Because they're involved in unclean practices. What does the devil want you to do? To do things unclean with your body. What does God want you to do? Blessed are the clean of heart, for they shall see God. Psalm 51. Amen. Lord, create in me a clean heart. So again, even from just a natural law standpoint, uh, the body, the eye, the, the eye was made to see, the ear was were made to hear. So every part of the body has a purpose. As the Greeks say, it has a teleos, an, an end result to it. Imagine if I get my ear and I say, well, I'm going to hammer the nail on the wall, put up a picture in the living room. I'm going to, I'm going to nail, the, um, uh, I'm going to nail this, uh, I'm going to hammer this nail to the wall with my ear. Okay. My ear was not meant to hammer a nail. There's going to be consequences to me using my ear as a hammer. Right. That's there right. There are consequences to misusing your part, body parts and nature doesn't forgive. Paul, comment? Natural law. You said it right. Natural law. Uh, when, when you violate natural law for every action, there's an equal and an opposite reaction. And when we see things like increased uh, uh, sexually transmitted diseases, that's part of it. That's right, Jesus 911. We'll, we'll pick up this topic. We'll be right back. Don't change that dial. Welcome, Daniel. You're on the line. What's on your mind, brother? Hi, I just wanted to share a testimony about Virgin Most Powerful Radio. I had a buddy at work who, you know, he's a lukewarm Catholic guy, and I wanted him to start listening to the Terry and Jesse show, so I kept telling him to download the app, and he kept putting me off. So one day, I grabbed his phone, and I downloaded the app <laughs> for him. I went on vacation, and you know, I kept telling him to listen to it. He was kind of put me off. I came back from vacation. He comes to my cubicle, and he says to me, Hey, man, I've been listening to Terry and Jesse's show, and it's great. And it's uh, made a big impact in his life. The guy, he's going to weekly adoration a couple times a wow. week. He goes to the Mass in the morning. Mm -hmm. and, uh, he's an uh, on-fire Catholic, and he promotes the Terry and Jesse show on the Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Daniel, what a testimony, and I want to encourage our listeners to get those cards by going to virginmostpowerfulradio.org and uh, do what Daniel's doing. Go out and spread the faith by inviting people to listen to Virgin Most Powerful. Daniel, thanks for your testimony, brother. God love you. You're welcome. Psalm 119 says, Your word is a lamp for my feet and a light to my path. According to St. John Paul II, being a Christian means saying yes to Jesus Christ. It consists in surrendering to the Word of God and relying on it, but also endeavoring to know better and better the profound meaning of this Word. May God grant that we always rely on His Word, read it often, and put it into practice. Buying or selling your home or your business property? This is Terry Barber. Real Estate for Life underwrites The Terry and Jesse Show, and they can connect you to one of 900 pro-life real estate agents around the world. And when they receive their referral fee, they will give 80% of it to a pro-life organization. Wow, that's 80%. Realestateforlife.org, 877-LIFE-US-1.
Now, back to Jesus 911. If this call is not an emergency, dial 888-526-2151. Soul Patrol, Jesus 911. By the way, next Monday, we're going to have Bobby Hesley. He's a black Catholic apologist. He's a, an incredible man of God. I met yeah. him a, a while back ago. And who's going to be talking about? He's actually been out there, kind of confronted Black Lives Matter. There's video of him on the Internet. We're going to have him on next week. He's going to go deep into who this organization is. And he says no black American, no American, period, can support them. Paul Clay will be on, obviously, as well. And Paul's also a black Catholic and stuff. So it'll probably be a good exchange of thoughts next Monday. You want to get people to hear next Monday. I'm going to have two amazing Black Catholic Christians who are lovers of God are steeped in Scripture. We're going to be talking about BLM. But right now, Paul, we're talking about, again, the dangers of just uh, this, this, the whole homosexual movement. And I'll just say two things. In Genesis 19, you can read this for yourself. We don't have time to look at it. The sin of a sodomy was something that offended God so much because it goes against natural law and divine law. Okay? It goes against the sexual complementarity established by God between man and woman, Adam and Eve. It's an offense against God. It's like poking God in the eye saying, you know what, we can do it better. We've got another arrangement. We've got another plan. Because what does God want? God's all about life. God's all about procreation. God's all about uh, you know, uh, bringing children into the world to evangelize them and take them to heaven and make them saints. Uh, the natural law shows that sodomy is uh, it's, it's intrinsically evil. Why? Because number one, it's a sterile act. It bears no fruit, and it's a selfish act. One person is satisfied, one is in pain. Paul, any comments? Yeah, it violates the... Listen, God says, be fruitful, multiply, and fill the earth. You know? Um, Sorry. <laughs> be fruitful, multiply, and fill the earth. That, that cannot be fulfilled in the homosexual act, period. Uh, it's that simple. Yeah, it's simple, very simple. Here's another thing I want to mention, Paul. In Genesis 19, everybody, if you don't know about the story of Sodom and Gomorrah, read it for yourself. God destroyed two cities because the cities were wicked. What was the sin of the cities? The sin of the city was rampant homosexuality. Now, you'll have also some other biblical exegetes. They'll say, yeah, they were also mean. They were inhospitable towards strangers. Okay, we can say, okay, Ezekiel, you know, kind of alludes to that. We can say, yeah, there was, you know, there's, well, yeah. It, it's inhospitable when you want to force somebody to, to, to sodomize him. When you want to force Lot, I'm going to rip your clothes off. I'm going to, I'm going to throw you over that bench and I'm going to force, forcefully sodomize you. Yes, that's inhospitable. So these modern liberal exegetes that say the sin of, of Sodom and Gomorrah, it's not sodomy. They were just unhospitable to strangers. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, but it's, they're not mutually exclusive. Yes. It's very inhospitable when you want to force yourself to rape another man uh, by the act of sodomy. Yeah, that's an act of inhospitality. So that's the way I would I would uh, exegete that passage is Genesis chapter 19. Paul, comment? Yeah, yeah. Um... I, you know, at this time, I'd like to just interject and just say, all sin is evil in the in the eyes of God. Amen. And you know, we have to remember we're not just focusing. You know, today we're you know that happens to be the top topic of conversation. Yeah, because of the post statement. Yeah. Exactly. Right. But the reality is, if you're a man and you have an an uh, an incl uh, inclination to be promiscuous and to cheat on your wife, it's just as bad. It's just as evil. The mortal sin. and yeah, and just like a just like a, a person who has an inclination towards same sex relationships, you know, uh, you know, he's called to resist that temptation. Well, we're called to resist whatever it is because we're all we all we're all bent, right, Jess? We're all born with a, yeah. uh, you know, our, our intellects have been darkened, uh, you know, through uh, 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 original, original sin. sin. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. So I just, you know, so if if you're listening, point, you know, good I, point. I, yeah. We all need to get to confession and, and stay in a state of grace because we, all, we all struggle with different Amen. inclinations. Amen. Here, Paul, here's a, here's a few things that I would mention. I'm looking at a study, at a medical study. Uh, it says here, uh, I'm reading from the medical study. It says, gay men, I don't use that, that word, but the study does. Gay men with AIDS interviewed in the early 1980s reported that they have on the average 1,100 partners in their lifetimes and some have had many more. And so that's one of the things that that lifestyle breeds is promiscuity. 
You know, even in the sheriff's department, there's places like in West Hollywood. I knew a lot of the West Hollywood cops. There was just bathrooms and stuff in certain places and locations where this was common practice by strangers. Uh, and here's also another thing, Paul, that pains me. And since you and me were steeped in scripture, I think the devil was very, very uh, shrewd. He did this on purpose. Notice what he grabbed as the sign for the LGBT movement, a rainbow. Because remember, the rainbow is a holy sign given to us by God, where God made a covenant with Noah. He said, I will never destroy the earth through water. It was a holy sign of friendship, of love that God made with the earth. But the homosexual movement, Paul, and be, being fueled by the diabolical, they've now used this holy sign to announce their perversion. And, uh, and again... Anybody, if he's a, if anybody is, that's even Catholic that's saying that this practice is okay and normal and it should be legalized, I would say, and I want to hear your take on this, Paul. I would say that anybody who teaches this, Catholic or Protestant, that this lifestyle is normal and the act is okay and is normal and stuff, I would say this. Saint Paul would call this in First Timothy chapter four verse one a doctrine of demons. So, Jess Romero, I'm saying if you are a Catholic that believes that there's nothing wrong and that this should be taught and legalized and promoted, you are teaching a doctrine of demons. St. Paul says, now the Spirit says in latter times, some will depart from the faith by giving heed, that means listening to, deceitful spirits and doctrines of demons. What Father James Martin is promoting, Paul, is a doctrine of demons, and we call we're calling him right now as two lay Catholics. Father, repent, believe in the gospel, and come back to your senses. Paul, what say you? Well, it, it goes back to the same old motif that we've been using. God is a God of order, and the devil is, you know, the, you know, the polar opposite. He's uh, he's all about disorder, and um, it's uh, you know this whole movement. And if you look at what's going on in our society today, it's all about the dismantling of everything orderly. And so, uh, again, and the Bible tells us generally, look, uh, friends with the world is enmity towards God. Mm. And so if you see a an idea like this idea of celebrating homosexuality and it's embraced and loved by the world so much, well, it's a safe bet to assume that uh, this is not a movement from God. <laughs> Uh, friends, friends with the world is enmity with God, and and if, and I'll, and I'll, you know, I'd like to add one more thing. Uh, if you notice, when uh, our Holy Father made a comment, uh, it was so popular with the world, and that's another indication that you can look to if the world is celebrating it and uh, and, and singing acc accolades, then you know that it's not from God, because the Bible clearly tells us that a slave is not greater than his master. The world hated Christ, and it will hate you if you stand for the uh, the beliefs of Christ. Amen. Amen. Paul, we've, got, we've gotten to the point right now, I mean, back in the maybe 60s and 70s, they were saying, hey, you know, can you tolerate us? You know, can you accept us and stuff? We've gone way past toleration and accept, you know, accepting, you know, my cousin's a yeah. homosexual and stuff. We're way past that. We're at the point now, Paul, where they have what's called gay pride parades. Yes. Now, now they're saying, you're going to watch what we do. We're going to, we're going to in, in, indoctrinate your kids. We're going to walk in public with G-strings. We're right. going to whip ourselves in public. We're going to have your kids watch this, and there's nothing you can do about it. And in fact, you better change your doctrine. You better accept this because this is here to stay. Paul, in San Francisco, I've seen pictures where during the gay pride parades, they specifically go in front of Catholic churches. They know where to go. And they, they, uh, they'll, they'll uh, rent a, 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 a construction caterpillar and they'll pick up cages with homosexual men in the cages naked and they'll and they and the cages hanging in front of the parish door as people are walking out of mass on a cage you have men naked doing indescribable things this is how bad it's gotten paul 
Yeah. They don't, they're way beyond toleration. They're saying, oh, yeah. you better accept this. And now they're getting the courts behind them. They got the Supreme Court. Now they got the bully pulpit of the, of the law. And if Biden and Harris win, Paul, if you and me talk like this in public, we yeah. are probably arrested for a hate crime if, if Joe Biden and Harris win. Comments? Am I understanding yeah. or, or, am I, or am I in la-la land? What? No, you're right on point. Listen, there's two things that we know anger God to the point of divine judgment. One, you mentioned it before, Jess, with Sodom and Gomorrah. God literally destroyed those two cities and the main practice was rampant homosexual activity that was going on, hence the word Sodom. The second is the slaying of the innocent. And if you look at Manasseh, the king of Israel, who slayed thousands of children, you know, uh, God uh, brought judgment and God took them off into captivity as a result of that. In the United States today, both of those things are going on and people don't realize that we're to the point of invoking the judgment of God, I believe, on this country because eventually God, uh, he must act because it is, is that great of an offense. Amen. Yeah. Paul, I don't think it's I don't think it's a coincidence that the LGBT movement has chosen the word pride parade. Pride. Notice that pride parade. Yeah. It, it basically, we're proud of our sin. Pride oh. is one of the seven deadly sins mentioned in Proverbs six sixteen, and pride was introduced by Lucifer himself when he rebelled against God. Amen. And the the homosexual Amen. movement has taken this sin. And they've enshrined it, and they call what they do on the streets of Los Angeles, New York, San Francisco, pride parades. Exactly. You know, I was listening to uh, Father Martin, and he was mentioning the fact that they have actually celebrated masses, you know, uh, uh, you know, for gay pride. And it's like, we since when do we have masses to celebrate uh, sin? I mean, you want to talk about a low point in the church, Jess, that is just uh, 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 incomprehensible. Paul, thanks for being on, bro. Two-man car, we're 10-7, yeah. we're off duty, we're out. We'll be back every Monday. Paul Clay, Lieutenant Paul Clay, Jess Romero, two-man car, Jesus 911. Next week, Bob Hesley, Bob Hesley, black Catholic apologist with Paul Clay, black Catholic apo- apologist as well. <laughs> we're going to be talking about BLM. You don't want to miss next week. Tell people about it. Because we're going to hear a perspective from two lovers of God who happen to be American and of black descent. Up next, Gary Machuda, hands-on apologetics, coming from the Midwest Command Center. You've been listening to Jesus 911. Paul, 10-7, we're out, brother. We'll see you next Monday. God bless you. All right, Jesus. St. Faustina's Prayer for Priests. O oh my Jesus, I beg thee on behalf of the whole church, grant it love and the light of thy spirit, and give power to the words of priests, so that hardened hearts might be brought to repentance and return to thee, O oh Lord. Lord, give us holy priests. Thou thyself maintain them in holiness. O oh divine and great high priest, may the power of thy mercy accompany them everywhere and protect them from the devil's traps and snares, which are continually being set for the souls of priests. May the power of thy mercy, O Lord, shatter and bring to naught all that might tarnish the sanctity of priests. For thou canst do all things. Amen. Virgin most powerful, pray for us.